so when you're looking at, at corporate technology strategy, you, you really need to be looking at um, something that's flexible and adaptable to different projects. Because it, without question, as you're working with different clients, they're going to have different requirements. And if you've created an ecosystem that's either custom built and very closed off, or you're working with a tech provider that doesn't really take a, an open, uh, integrated strategy um, approach to development, you're going to end up in a situation where those, those integrations become very difficult, if not impossible. Um, so as you're, you're evaluating your technology strategy as an organization, that's an ongoing process that doesn't just happen once. As, but as you're adding applications, you're platforming, you're replatforming, you're looking at your uh, data structure and governance, really make sure that you are building something that is adaptable and can be easily integrated with other systems because if you don't do that, you can't pivot from project A to project B. It's going to be a lot of work. Your IT team is not going to like you very much. And, and it just creates a lot of extra frustration that, that's definitely not needed. You can, you can strategically build something that can allow you to pivot. So I'm, I'm gonna make up a new term here, dynamic SOPs, because I think, Jeff, you were kind of describing that before the question of this, what is this choose your own adventure that says we as a company need to retain this certain information, but how we go about doing that could be path A, could be path B, could be path C, depending on if we're in an owner that if, you know, enforces eBuilder or some other you know, system requirement, and, and there's all different situations that you could come into. So there, there is no, you know, Barry, to your question, there is no easy answer to that because that's why we're in construction. The answer is it depends on your project, but having an approach that says not just here's our way of doing it and put it up against the wall and then you bat it all together and come up with some hodgepodge you know, execution plan that nobody follows, like why not start with something that's more of a question based where you guys go through it together and make those decisions of whose system should it start in, where should it end, and what's the pathway to get there? Yeah, and, and I'm gonna take this because I've, I've actually been on the tech stack building side, but I've also been on the software sales side and software creation side for the lifetime of my career. So I kind of bridge both gaps. And two parts of that question that are interesting to me is one about the question of licensing and licensing fees and the costs of this upfront. Run. People are expensive too. So most of the time when you don't do it with the systems, you're doing with a person and a person cannot work at the speed that a computer can. And computers don't take days off. Computers don't need healthcare. They don't need those things. And so overall, when you're doing a total cost, you've got to look at those things. I don't believe in return on investment. I believe in return on implementation and what it value it can bring. However, I also do believe that licensing fees, especially in our current world, are getting way out of hand. And it's because we don't look at them from a consumption base and what they're actually providing us to. And I think that's also where you guys as leaders can sit down and understand that those fees are negotiable. And you can tell I don't work for a software company right now because I can say that. <laughs> so they are negotiable. And you should sit down and talk about your consumption rates. There is a difference between generating a bunch of reports, 57 different reports that we need to, to deliver to somebody, and I am in the system taxing it, using it, benefiting from it. Those are two very different use cases, and it's something that we need to mature. The construction technology ecosystem, which includes all of us, the AECO and the EPC world, is not mature yet. It is maturing and it is getting there fast, but it's not bringing you all along with us. And we need that there because there is, they need to make money because they're in business and you need to make money because you're in business. That's the other little secret here, by the way, is everybody's actually doing this to make money and be profitable. We're just a little scared to say it for some reason.